Just a few hours ago, the University of St. Thomas student accused of calling in fake bomb threats was back in court as the judge took the first steps in deciding whether or not he'll stay in jail as the case against him plays out. Ray Persaud is accused of calling in three bomb threats to the University of St. Thomas over the past year. The first happened in April and the latest was earlier this month. Gordon Severson was in the courtroom today. He's here to explain what happened today. Gordon? Yeah, Randy, while attorneys made their cases to either keep Prasad in custody or release him to his family today until the trial starts, one of his attorneys said something very interesting. He said this will be his firm's fourth fake bombing case in two years. It's a crime that's sadly becoming more common these days thanks to new technology that even everyday teenagers can use to conceal their identity. It's very concerning in this day and age. I mean, with what's going on across the country, um, it's, it's very concerning, and none of this can ever be taken lightly. After 21 years with the Secret Service, Mike Olson now works cybersecurity here in the Twin Cities and says online threats against schools, companies, and governments are increasing nationwide. Given today's environment, all these threats obviously have to be taken seriously. So it's worrisome for him to hear a 20 year old college student allegedly use bomb threats to get out of class, not once, but three different times, not using a phone line, but using a VoIP, a voice over Internet protocol. It's basically in lieu of having to actually use a, a telephone. They're commonly used to make cheap or free long distance phone calls through the Internet but criminals often use them to conceal their identity. You know, you can put anything in there. It doesn't even have to work in this particular case. Um, you could make up an email and then just get going and start making calls. It's just one of many online tools out there that can be abused by someone who wants to do harm. And for investigators, tracking them down in an online world is harder than ever. You know, establishing probable cause and being able to go get a warrant and things like that are having to go through a lot more steps because of the use of technologies. But like this case shows, despite all the challenges, investigators can still track people down and hold them accountable. Otherwise, we end up with copycats and people think it's okay to get out of an exam or whatever it is. Now, when it comes to this current case, Prasad will stay, stay in jail until sometime next week when probation officials can go and see if his family's home will be an acceptable place to keep him until the trial starts. Prosecutor, prosecutors, however, recommend a halfway house with 24-hour monitoring. We'll find out about that later next week. All right. Thank you, Gordon.